remember the famous pottery making scene in Ghost with Patrick Swayze and Demi Moore. I see the same beauty when I witness diamond turning machines in action. But what if we could combine the strength of a diamond with the accuracy of a laser? That is what I love about Microlamp. Our next virtual company tour is different. On Tuesday, June 29th, we will visit two Microlamp facilities on both sides of the Atlantic, from Stevenage in the UK to Portage, Michigan. So why am I so fascinated with Microlamp? In a standard diamond turning machine, the tip of the diamond can make any symmetric optical surface on glass, crystal or metals while turning it like the hands of Demi did on the pottery. But Microlamp goes a step further. They manage to shine a laser through the diamond tip, adding further functionality. But what problems are they solving? What lasers can they integrate? What laser optics are needed for the right beam shape reaching the diamond tip? What new applications come to your mind? Join me on a transatlantic journey of 4,000 miles to discover how it all works and how EPIC members can help Microlamp. The transatlantic ferry departs on Tuesday, June 29th at 4 p.m. Central European time, 3 p.m. in Stevenage and 10 a.m. by Lake Portage, Michigan. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live and we are connecting live to Michigan, Michigan in the United, United States, States to meet, to meet the CEO CEO of Microlam, Deepak Ravindra. I'm arriving, I see a door in front of me and the door is finally opening. Deepak, thank you thank very you. much for very having me. Yeah, welcome in. Of course. Of course. Happy to. So we are walking into Microland facilities. How amazing is it that we can do these fantastic visits? Thank you very much, Deepak, for this. I am super excited, super excited of being here. Yeah, so we are, we are super excited to have you. Thank you, Jose, for hosting. Um, so welcome to sunny Portage, Michigan. It's a, Michigan's a great lake state. And if you, a little bit about Portage itself, what we have very famous here in Portage is we have Stryker Medical. So if you have been to a hospital, um, you have used a Stryker bed or a Stryker instrument. So Stryker Medical is based here. Um, Pfizer is here. So 80% of the Pfizer vaccines are made right across the street from us. Um, the other thing that is really interesting here is that we have over 40 micro breweries. So for those of you who like beer, this is the place to be. Um, and of course, not to forget the most important reason why you guys are all here is Microlamp. So Microlamp's based in Portage. Um, so Microlamp itself, you know, we have we've been existent for it's over six years now. Now product has been in the market for, for about five years. And for those of you who, who know Microlamp, you, you'll link it to our laser assisted machining system. And I'm gonna do a very quick um, high level demo of, of the concept. I know, Jose, you did a very good introduction on it. Um, so let's imagine that's the diamond and that's the tool. It's not a real diamond. If it was a real diamond, we won't be here. Um, and let's just imagine that's the part. And I'm going to shine a laser through the diamond and you can see it heating up the part. So yes. the trick is we, the, the diamond is a mechanical and it's an optical component. We diverge the beam and we direct it right to the cutting edge. So we heat and soften the part to extend the tool life. Now, as so a you use the diamond of, as, the, as, the, as, the, as the laser optics itself. You, you have on one hand correct, the properties yes. of diamond so, to be the hardest material of all, and on the other to be an optically partially transparent material. Correct, correct. exactly. Smart. So that's the mechanical side that is cutting, and that is the optical side that's actually sending the laser through. And when, when you said that the, 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 there is heating, is that the, the main property, the main added value of shining the laser to, to do local heating of the, of the material? Correct. So we are heating anywhere between 100 to 300 microns, so one to three diameters of the hair, human hair. Um, and the whole idea for that is what we want to do is slightly reduce the hardness of the material so the tool lasts a lot longer. You know, you can see, you know, some of the parts where, 
um, the viewers would be very familiar with. One of this is a large silicon part. Um, mm -hmm. So silicon optics is machinable, but as you get bigger in sizes, it becomes really challenging for the tool, especially to start hitting that half fringe spec and stuff like that. You need a tool that is really um, repeatable and you need a tool that is holding up well. Um, so you can see one of the first markets that we actually entered is the infrared side of things. So we have calcium fluoride, zinc sulfide, zinc selenide, and then you would see a little bit of germanium there. So germanium doesn't have a um, tool life issue and many of the viewers would know that. However, the value here with our system is that it, it doubles the productivity. So you're able to machine a lot faster and usually germanium is a productivity or a production capacity limitation and not so much of a tool wear limitation. Um, you know, the, so so you know, the advantages are twofold then. So on one hand, on one hand, you can really uh, make probes for, for diamond tourney live a lot longer. And on the other, you can increase the throughput. Let's go to the first one because I have a question there. Do you have some metrics on the extended lifetime of the, of the, of the tools once you send the laser through them? Sure. So typically, and again, this is, um, it varies from customer to customer, but what they are seeing is for silicon optics that is anywhere from 50 to about 100 millimeters in diameter, they're seeing about a two and a half to three X tool life improvement. Now, when you get to larger silicon pieces, which is 150 millimeters to about 230 millimeters, that's almost enabling because from what we're understanding from the customer is without the laser, you may have to set two to three tools before you get one part. But now we are giving them the opportunity to not only machine the part with one tool, but also correct it and get a part that is well within spec as well. I have brought quite a lot of friends with me in the room and I will be constantly bringing them on the discussion. But I, I actually, for me, I have visited uh, SAIS, I have visited Aspherikon, I have visited Optimax, and I always get quite excited to see how they are uh, using diamond turning solutions for actually quite volume intensive applications. And one of the biggest problems that they, they have is really the off the downtime of the machines. This is something that you have spotted as, a, as, a, as an added value, as a solution that you want to solve, right? Absolutely, absolutely right. Um, you know, diamond turning is a very deterministic process, meaning that um, everything in that can be predicted. You can correct for all the errors in an ideal world. However, if your tool is wearing off in an unpredictable manner, it becomes less deterministic. So that's the advantage we're providing to our customer that you have a more predictable tool pattern that you're able to compensate for. And every tool you put in, it's repeatable in terms of results. You, I am so happy to be here. Show me more stuff. I really want to see more stuff. I wish I could touch so, stuff. <laughs> so the other markets that we have been in is we also have developed a very robust process to diamond turn tungsten carbide. So tungsten carbide is extremely hard and they use that for molds in glass pressing. So we have had a, a very good successful rate. So we have over 45 systems globally now machining tungsten carbide molds. Um, in addition to that, our latest would be the glass optics. So we have we've just started the process in defining glass optics for fuel silica and BK7. This is for diamond learning. Tungsten carbide molds have been recently used for, for high precision uh, optics manufacturing. And when it comes to precision, I always had this question when we talk about diamond turning. What is the, 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 the precision levels? What is the maximum accuracy you can do in the, in, with diamond turning machines? So with, with diamond turning machines, the machines itself are extremely accurate, right? So they have most of the diamond turning machine today have 16 picometers in resolution. Now, how are you going to measure that? That becomes a metrology challenge. But really the definition of, of it is how preci precise you are is your entire process. So between how you set it up, your best practices, the tools that you have on top, and also the parts that you're machining, that defines, um, that really defines your accuracy. And a lot of times for infrared materials, you don't do any post polishing or the post processing beyond the diamond trading machine is ready to go to a customer site. I want to see more things. I'm always right. super, super curious. So please, please continue. 
Sure. So let's go through the uh, facility. In this side of it, we have mostly um, offices. I want to say hello to everyone to see they are seeing yeah. me. Hello, everyone. Hello, I want to see hands yeah. up, thumbs up. It is great to see you. Thank you very much for having me today here. Hello, everyone. Everybody is here. here. Everybody is happy. Everybody is maintaining social distancing, which is uh, quite interesting. But you are next to Pfizer, so you don't need it. Actually, so, I got my first shot a couple so of weeks ago. Almost ago. everyone here is all vaccinated. Um, but um, yeah, we are, we are next to Pfizer, but you know, we, we do get. You know, I think most of us had it in March or April, so all of us got got pretty early actually vaccinated. All right, uh, we are walking. Uh, this is a this is the meeting room where we are going to meet very soon. Sure. Yep. Um, so this side we have a um, a corridor, and a corridor is mostly this corridor is mostly used by our employees to get from one side of the building to another. So we like to call it like home turf, right? So this how is many corridor. people? Home. How many people do you have working at uh, at uh, Microlang? So at our facility in Michigan, we have uh, thirty two. In Stevenage, we have about ten. And then in Keen, we have another another 10 or so employees there. So we have close to about 50 employees in total in the whole group. Okay. Um, now we can see exciting so pictures, motivational. We have, yeah, we always like to highlight the um, extra activities that we do. We do, we do a weekly fitness activity to keep the whole team together. Um, I think I told you we have a lot of um, microbreweries, so we need to keep fit for that. <laughs> Um, the middle screen is highlighting um, any employee contributions or innovations. In this particular case, we have Doug, who's come up with his own design for a 3D printer tool case. And okay. um, for that, we like to highlight, and that will change, you know, even on a weekly basis, on a bi-weekly basis, any innovations will be highlighted on that. And then the third screen that we have here is really, you know, MicroLab, we go to... Um, some of the key conferences and we give a lot of technical talks because we think educating the customers is is the best way to um, actually give them the confidence of the technology. So with this here, we have um, any new posters or presentations or papers that is put up there so employees can, while they pass through the corridor, they can take a time, some time to read on, on the new. Deepak, um, this is a, a very important aspect of, of Microlang because one thing that made me very excited is that you collaborate with your customers to, you, to do joint research. And that's something that yeah. I have seen as something beautiful, as an example to follow. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit more about that? A couple of success sure. stories that you so, have done? You know, as you look through the products and the materials, so if you look at, the materials we were going into, for example, tungsten carbide, it's not something that we just said, you know, one fine day, let's try tungsten carbide. It's actually a problem that's brought to us by the customer. Even the, how the product is designed is, is a lot of input that came from the customer itself. So we strongly believe that we would put in the necessary resources. The customer has a, a need, right? So if they have a pain point, we definitely want to find a solution to to solve that. And we think that part of the success that we have is greatly contributed towards the collaborations that we have with our customers. Very good. And now we are gonna see the, the facilities, the, the manufacturing, sure. the technology, please. Yeah. So we'll go on to the machine shop. Here we have yes. a small little machine shop. Uh, it's gonna be a little loud, but that's how machine shops are. So we have a lot of metal working equipment in here. Um, what we're doing in here is that we support any in-house manufacturing as well as the R&D and diamond turning side of it. So fixtures and stuff like that, we would be able to do that uh, almost on a same day basis here. Uh, can they, without breaking any confidential policy, can my cameraman get a bit closer to the operator? Just a bit closer. I'm just that curious. Hello, this is good to see you. What what are, what are you doing? Oh, I'm taking a little bit off here to make it fit and finish. That looks that looks super cool. Careful, careful with your fingers. You know this doesn't look. <laughs> uh... Still have all my digits. <laughs> Thank you so much for this. I am so excited to see the next thing. Please, please, Deepak, tell me. You told me oh. that I was gonna meet uh, your friend Hossein and your friend Sai, right? Yes, and before that, we're going to meet Mike a little bit. Mike has a CNC machining center 
So all the high tolerance parts for the Optimus products, as well as the M10 tools, we would do it here. Um, this machine will run 24 hours a day, even lights off. And, uh, Hello, there. Michael. Hello. So the cameraman is sitting closer. Hello. It's good Hello, to see everybody. you. What, 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 are, what are you doing? He's asking, what are you doing? Uh, making a picture. I, I can't see the, well, the water condensed on the glass, so it's hard to see through it, but a picture of what? Please let us know. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. So the next area we're going to get onto is the production and engineering side. I'd like to introduce you to Hussein Mohammadi. Um, Hussein is the production lead here at Microlamp. Hello. Thank Jose. you very you much, there? Hossein, for being with us today. Great to, great to see you. I heard amazing things of what you do, and I can't wait to start witnessing them. Yeah, thank you. So welcome to the engineering and production department at Microlamp. Here's uh, that all those magical designs and products came to reality. We have a very talented, hardworking team, consists of the engineer, uh, interns, manufacturing expertise, working together, make sure that whatever that we release is in perfect shape. Uh, we working in a precision engineering world. So means that everything that we manufacture, everything that we design should be in very high level, precision level, basically. So uh, when I'm saying precision, means that we working in engineering, we working in a micron level in metric or 10 of thousand in imperial range, if you prefer that scale. So we had a very rigorous uh, inspection process okay. as well. Um, mm -hmm. Hello. Yeah. Hello, good to see uh, you. British, our tech, tech savvy, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and you have Tim, Nathan. Hello, Tim. They inspecting Hello, the part. thank you so almost, much for having me today. Yeah, almost every part that we uh, manufacturing or um, outsource, we, it should go through the inspection. Uh, and I will say we have zero tolerance for out of tolerance parts. Um, so, as I said, zero tolerance means a lot to me. I have zero tolerance for many things, but when it comes to manufacturing, that doesn't exist. So what I want to ask you is, uh, do you have uh, partnerships with metrology uh, centers, metrology companies can actually, that, that actually work with you? We working with, uh, we, we have a lot of metrology tools here. Some of them are like the manual one that you had to see here. We have some automated one that you are not in this area, but we use them for the um, our, our parts. For the, the R&D, especially for the R&D, we have many optical metrology tools that we use. And I think after we go to the R&D, we can talk about them later. Fantastic. But yeah, definitely be working with many of these big um, metrology companies as well. So can, I let me... you, uh, can I tell you a, a secret, Sadi? Your yeah. friends from Stephen H are super, super worried today because they are playing Germany at 6 o'clock Netherlands times, <laughs> then a, a 12 a.m. for you in Massachusetts. Just so you know, they are super, super worried. We're going to joke with them later, but then show me, show me what you want to show me. Okay, yeah. So let me walk you through the, the assembly um, side of the this department. So we have products and uh, many accessories. This is the stations for, let me start with the accessories. We have the station for different accessories. We have a views and Hawkeye. Those are the uh, accessories that we use for monitoring the tool and the you know tool post uh, while we doing the machining. We have the halo for alignment. So we be using laser, right? So we, this is the halo for alignment. Also, we check the power while we aligning that. That's uh, another accessory that we have. This is a uh, you know how we put the part together, um, and you know is is uh, uh, basically we should make sure when we put them together there is no any flaw in in the process. So that's the uh, our latest product which is t2 we will talk about it later uh, but how this is how we put it, get it together so just to give you an example we we tram every part that we think we put in together with the dial indicator means that it should be almost with no uh, you know 
out of tolerance assembly, I would say. And then um, last but not least, the, the, the actual product, which is the Optimus T plus one and T2. I want to hand over this part to the SI. And this, so is the, this is the jewel in the crown. This is the Optimus. This is what everybody has been waiting for. I, I, yeah. You're going to hand it to somebody else? Who is, who is coming to show this to me? This is a side that uh, our technical sales. Um, oh, side. I, 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 I met you before. I don't know if you remember me. And I am very curious to, to know how you're going to sell me that. Yeah, yeah, sell that to me. I'm going to buy it. Sell it to me. <laughs> Let, let's let's see if I can do the trick. But so I'm, I'm Sai, the technical sales engineer here at Microlab, and um, I've been with the company um, arguably since its formation, close to 2012. Um, uh, and since then, you know, we brought out the Optimus T Plus One, which was the first industrial variant of a laser-assisted machining tool post uh, suitable for diamond turning machines. Um, now that this has been in the market for over a hundred, you know, with, with over a hundred systems out there, we've taken the voice of the customers and looked to their feedback on how can we make something that's, that's already been very beneficial for them even better. So we've incorporated a few ergonomic changes in the Optimus T2, which is our latest offering here. Um, it's, it's a more rigid nose setup with all the features, um, sort of simplified. Uh, we have a nice hood to protect okay, everything. We're talking good. about a tool that is marketed, as I just talked to, to Deepak, is, is marketed for increasing the uptime of diamond turning equipment. So at the end of the day, robustness and reliability are, are the key aspect in the assembly of this, of this head, correct? Absolutely. So uh, the T2, you know, even more detail has been... Um, paid attention to in, in making everything fit, fit together. There's there's better seals, more rigid, fewer components, uh, so that it's it's better for, you know, failure and so forth, and even easier uh, replaceability of service items and so forth. Um, and then, like I said, sealing this is a good one. one. So replaceability of the service items, that's, that's one of the headaches. I, I went to visit a company in Aken, Sonex. I don't know if you know them. I went to visit them and they told me one of the headaches here is that whenever we need to replace, because even we work with the best, sometimes it needs to be replaced. It, it takes a lot of time uh, on, the, on the taking out, on the putting it, on the after alignment, on the calibration, it takes a reasonable amount of time. Are you, are you looking at this as a, as a challenge to be solved? Yeah, so I, I think what you're referring to is tool alignment. Um, with, with the laser assisted system, you know, there's there's only a mere addition of two minutes, for example, of the laser alignment portion. And um, as far as the general alignment of the tool to the diamond turning machine, the customer, you know, can choose their own methods that everybody sort of prefers. They have their own tips and tricks of how they do it you know within company to company um so we, we you know we let the customers do what they like um yeah all right so you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna bring on my first guest today i have the ceo of a company in belgium the company is called Villans UPMT and Mark Villans, the, the CEO and good friend of mine is here. He came with me all the way to Massachusetts to meet you guys. Uh, Mark, good afternoon. Hello, Mark. Hello, good afternoon. So Mark, Hello. you are a manufacturer of free form wafer level micro optics. Uh, we have just visited, we are visiting a company that does, uh, that enables diamond turning. One of the things they said, they can make molds with very, very high resolution did something so far resonate with you? Yes, of course. Uh, yes, of course. So I was thinking, well, of the interest of, of uh, uh, cutting glass, as I hear, heard it. So without doing the molding, doing direct machining of glass, uh, is, is that more difficult or is it easier than cutting the, the, the mold, the, the, the tungsten carbide? I would say both pose, pose unique challenges. Um, as far as wafer level molding directly on, for example, tungsten carbide um, and other materials used for molding, um, that is something that was licensed to a company, to one of our customers roughly more than a year ago. 
Oh. So although we, we can't sell the Optimus for that space, this is for molding specifically, uh, we are able to do wafer level glass parts, complete glass parts with direct um, operation on glass, no problem. Um, yeah, feel free to say the name of the company. It's fine. We are between friends here. Oh, I, 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 I think uh, that might, might be confidential. Oh, okay, sorry. So you mean you mean we we would not be allowed to buy your your uh, device and use it for machining tungsten carbide? That's correct. Yeah, at this time for wafer level molding, that uh, that does fall into the competitive space that we have signed up signed a exclusive agreement with with the company. Um, essentially, to to make you know things short, we developed this this technology. Um, for silicon to start with, but then we went into tungsten carbide, and the comp the company uh, has now licensed that technology exclusively for themselves. All right, very bad, uh, very bad news. <laughs> this is this is the, the best answer that you because can we, get there. We, See we, we, we saw yeah. this as an as an ideal, let's say. Uh, uh, all right, uh, and now uh, I, I'm gonna come back to you, Mark. But uh, before yeah. that, uh, Hossein wants to show us something super cool. Hossein. Yes, uh, yeah. Let me show you the, the other key component of our system, which is the laser control station, which we control the laser with this, means we changing the power, uh, we integrate it to the diamond turning machine, so it means that when we start the program on the diamond turning machine, the laser goes on or goes off, and we can change the laser power and so on. It is um, very, it's designed here, and we manuf manufacture it locally. It's ergonomically designed, so it means that operator can move it easily. We have the accessories that they can access easily. And uh, it's UL, is CE Mark, so last year we CE marked it. Uh, we can see there's some component inside of it. This is the control panel that we have. Uh, almost every component here is Rojas compliant. So it means that uh, uh, those uh, countries that they have the restriction for that, they would, wouldn't have any problem with that. Um, so this is the, the shipping area, basically the uh, wrapping and uh, power system. This is one of the systems that we're planning to ship to one of our uh, customer in a few days. And this is the shipping area. Uh, let me watch you to the uh, prototyping and 3D. Oh, say now you're watching to walk into the prototype. Let's talk while you walk. Uh, we have uh, for me. What is the standard prototype of a customer? Because I, I was just talking to Cide. I, I almost thought that they could have made a sale for you. What is the what is the prototype of a of a customer for you? Is the is the the, the, the third party optics manufacturer provider? Is the company who wants to manufacture optics for their own products? How how what is your customer base? The customer for in general, the customer of the microland tools. So I think I, I leave it to the Deepak to explain this part. So, so Jose, the customer could be, you know, anyone who either needs to improve the diamond turning capability or somebody who just wants optics. So we do all of that, right? Collectively between the three facilities, we have nine diamond turning machines. Um, so we could provide a process and a solution in the form of the laser assisted product to turbocharge your diamond turning machine. We could also, if you just had a tooling issue in Stephen H, what they do is they manufacture ultra precision tools day in and day out. This is for the laser process and also for conventional diamond turning. So we can provide that solution. Or if the customer is not ready to bring diamond turning in house yet, in Keen, we have a facility that we recently uh, brought in as part of our group, which is 603 Optics. Um, so in Keen, we are able to actually machine optics for you and support until you're ready to buy the solution and the technology, and then we can transfer that on to you. Sounds good because you do the, 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 the first idea, the first prototype, you can enable with the customer the pilot. And when he wants to ramp up and go to production, you can supercharge. I love that word, supercharge. Exactly. And, and we think we're de risking the process, we're de risking the customer a whole lot as well. There. 
All right. And I think Jose now is going to give me a few more details about the Optimus before we fly together to Stevenage. By the way, an amazing area. Yes. So I was talking about uh, this prototyping and 3D printing station. We, uh, as an example, one of the, the part that we 3D print as a product is that a tool, a uh, diamond tool holder, which is... And the great. camera person get closer to your hand because I cannot really see and I really yeah, want to. Yeah. See, this is a... 3D printed together, so it means it's not multiple pieces. It's one piece that printed uh, together, and it just folded, and that's it. And it is we help we using this for keeping uh, the diamond tools and protect them. Uh, so we we use that technology basically for uh, this type of products. So I want to move to the tooling area. Yes, uh, I will, I leave it to Deepak and to to. So Jose, now we're going to go to the uh, M10 Technology Center. We're not going to Stevenage just as yet, but um, this is an area that is uh, highly confidential. So we don't take um, anybody inside. Um, obviously, when you come in for a for a visit, we will you know definitely consider showing you. But I wanted you to meet. Uh, let's see if you can get Sudesh really quick, just to give you a one minute of. What's For everyone in the door. audience, when the door opens, don't look through there. Don't close your eyes. <laughs> Good. All, All right. right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Hello. Uh, welcome to the MTN Edge Technology Center here in Portage, Michigan. Uh, my role over here is the program manager, uh, overseeing our research and development activities, uh, as well as our global manufacturing operations uh, for our ultra precision diamond tooling lineup. Uh, three key areas that we work on over here, you know, one is research and development uh, into diamond tooling, you know, specifically, uh, you know, drilling down into the diamond itself, you know, what is a suitable diamond to use for a particular uh, cutting operation, as well as the whole assembly of a diamond tool uh, that includes the shank, how the uh, diamond and shank are bonded together, uh, then with the ultimate goal of providing the customer the best tool uh, that they're most satisfied with for the application. Uh, second area we work on over here is uh, manufacturing process optimization. So basically, how can we make the diamond tool better for the customer, more consistent? Uh, you as can, well you, can, the you have the industry. standard product, but you can actually customize them to the right. to yes. the particular needs of the customer. For example, right. I have I have companies in the room like Sus Micro Optics that are going to introduce you to them later, and they, 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 you could actually understand what are their needs and make a customized solution for them. Right. Yes, which uh, brings me to the third point, as I said, uh, which is where it's the customer focused uh, application. So basically, as you just said, uh, you know, we, we can uh, design and manufacture custom uh, tooling uh, for to meet the customer's needs, uh, you know, and also take into account uh, materials and uh, your whole process and uh, come up with the best solution for you. So these are the three key uh, items that we deal with over here at Portage, Michigan in our M10H Technology Center. We also perform uh, production uh, for our customers and uh, as well as uh, you know being located co-located with uh, the micro lamp team over here uh, the one unique capability we have when we do production over here is to be able to turn around tools for our micro lamp r d team very quickly in a matter of few days uh, as well as you know sometimes on the same day even you know with you know what customers. i'm listening to you and what i can think about is what is behind that door because i can imagine that you're making their medical optics consumer electronics exactly. optics i am like getting goosebumps i cannot resist i i'm too curious to be talking to you next to that door right. you know what they told yeah. me they told me that we're gonna go to the uk so i am really prepared to do that yeah. uh, can, can we can we go can we fly over the atlantic all together can we take a plane and go all the way to steven H? yep let's switch over to steven H. Uh, we are flying, we are arriving at Stevenage. Uh, I would like to say one thing, which is that today, in one hour and 25 minutes, the UK, the England is playing Germany in the Euros 2020. Um, I have to say this, I have to. It's not one lion, it's not even two, it's all the lions. Hello, Steven H. Uh, hello, my name is Jose Posta. I'm really happy to come and visit you. Welcome to M10H. So I am here. Thank you very much for having me. 
the first thing I noticed is that uh, I am super excited for being here. So please allow my excitement. Uh, ben Smith Rudik is the person that we have in front of us. Ben, thank you very much for having me. The first thing I noticed is that I don't see microlam anymore. I see M10. Why am I seeing M10 and not microlam? What is happening? Did I did I knock on the wrong door? <laughs> no, you're in the right facility. Um, M10 Edge is the sister company of Microlam. Um, Microlam supply their customers with a specific type of diamond tool, which is used on their technology. And M10 Edge is the sole supplier of those tools to Microlam. Excellent. And, and today uh, I am here to understand a bit which Epic members can help you. What are you going to show us today? So what I have for you today is just a brief presentation on M10, tell you a little bit about us and what we're doing. Unfortunately, we can't go into the production facility. Um, a lot of our equipment and processes are covered by IP, so we don't want to give too much away. But uh, you have to give me a little bit away so I can do some business with these guys, remember. Okay, go <laughs> on. Okay, so M10 Edge is a manufacturer of ultra precision diamond tools. We manufacture them as new and we also repair tools. Um, as you mentioned, I'm Ben Smith Ruddick. I've been in the diamond turning industry for over 15 years and I've been with M10 Edge since it was founded in 2019. So M10 Edge supplies tools into many different markets. One of those markets is the electro optics market. This tends to be infrared materials, which are being diamond turned by our tools, such as silicon, calcium fluoride, zinc sulfide, zinc selenide, and germanium, also amongst many others. These optics are then used for either thermal imaging systems or defense optics. We also supply tools that are used for diamond turning metals, such as aluminium, copper, and brass, and these are often used for space applications. We also supply diamond tools into the optics. Lingi, 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 lingi. Did you say space applications? Yes, correct. Space applications. Are we talking free form optics for, for a space? Yes, absolutely. Free form optics, um, generally mirrored surfaces. When we talk about free form optics for a space with diamond turning, we are talking about reasonably large optics, which is not something that was prepared. So I am surprised and I love when this happens. Uh, what is the largest, the largest optics that you can manufacture? What is the largest optics you typically manufacture? And you don't tell me as large as it comes. Please don't do that. Oh, so the largest aluminium mirror that I've known one of our customers to diamond turn was actually two meters in size. I'm not entirely sure what the application was because they couldn't tell me, but that's the largest one that I know of. Well, one thing also, when it comes to space optics, the, 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 the world of metal optics is growing like crazy, like, like crazy. And when it comes to metal optics, uh, I, I love the way that we can actually now micro machine them. Uh, I, I went to visit a, a company in Jena, it's called Space Optics, and they are doing metal optics for the European Space Agency. Have, uh, have you seen metal optics as a, as, a, as a new trend, as a new, and it's a new field in which you can, you can grow, you have the right tool for this? Yeah, I'd say metal optics have been machined for many, many years. Um, the size of the parts now, and also the, the makeup of the part, is becoming more and more challenging. Um, so we're seeing more of our customers look to machine diffractives, for example, on these small optics. And that's where a very, very challenging diamond tool is needed to machine those. Do, do, do you see this growing as a segment in Europe? I mean, uh, you, you are in Stevenage, UK. We just came from, from, from the US. I'm here as the entry point for the European continent. Do you see a growth on that segment here? The, what, what is the, the trend that you are observing? It was a yeah, very good year. Definitely. 2020 was a very good year for optic manufacturers. Yeah, I'd see not just in Europe do we see that market growing, but I'd say globally, it's definitely growing. Um, if you look at countries such as China, India, Russia, America, um, year on year, um, more and more metal optics are manufactured in these, in these countries. 
you know, I just came from from uh, from Massachusetts, uh, and I came from the U.S. And your 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 friends are very close to striker, so I didn't want to ask anything just in case they they heard of the striker. But now I'm here very far, so I can ask you, med, uh, medical optics is that something that you are seeing, and what kind of new challenges are you seeing in med in the medical domain? So in the medical domain, it's a lot rarer for parts to be diamond turned, um, so manufactured with diamond tools. The majority of parts that are used in the medical industry are actually manufactured using a different process. And uh, you know what I'm seeing in the medical domain? What I'm seeing in the medical domain is that there are the, the giants, so the Olympus and the Strikers and the Siemens and the Philips, and they are doing fantastic, uh, and a stable business for you. But then there are the startups. And the startups, there's a lot, a lot of startups who have new ideas for medical, medical lasers for dermatology or the solutions for OCT that need customized optics. And this is where you come in, right? You can actually help the companies developing a process and a prototype that is suitable for diamond turning based volume production, correct? Yeah, absolutely. If a company lets us know the material they want to machine and they supply us with a drawing of the part, we can recommend the diamond tool that can machine it for them. Ben, what else are you going to show me? Uh, so just, uh, do you want me to carry on with this or to show you the tools? I want you to show me because I want you to give me the slides okay. and I will give it to the members. I want to, I want to see stuff. I want to, I want to see little tools. Okay, yes. so the tools are here. Um, what you see here are conventional diamond tools, which mm -hmm. are on a solid shank. These are commonly used for machining infrared optics or metal optics. What we have here, these tools on a slightly larger shank, you'll see there's one synthetic diamond, which is yellow in color, and one natural diamond, which is almost transparent in color. These are actually the tools that our sister company, Microlam, use on their system. So they're an optomechanical tool. And these small inserts that I have here, which needs to be patient with me because if I drop these, they're quite fragile. So what you see here, these insert tools, yeah. these are commonly used in the contact lens and IOL industries. And the reason they use an insert tool is that they're faster for tool changes so that their machines have less downtime. What is the average the time between changing to, what is, for a very skilled person, what is the, the time that takes to, to switch the blade, to switch the tool? For an insert tool, probably under 20 minutes. For a solid shank tool, probably under 45 minutes. Okay, that's that's very, very low. Uh, yeah. I can tell you from the discussions I had with some companies making, making or providing uh, diamond turning services and optics, this is very low. 25 to 45 minutes is really, really low. And of course, they want to change tools as quickly as possible because while a tool isn't cutting, that machine's down, which means it isn't making money for them. Definitely. Uh, how many people are based in Stevenage uh, at the M10 Microlang? So we have 13 people here at this facility at the moment, the majority of which work in production. All right. I, I, want, to, I want to come and maybe bring some of my friends to, to visit to visit your production facilities. I live in the Netherlands, and so very often I actually do take the ferry to go to Harvick, so we are, we are in, the, in the area. So I'm very curious to, to, to see, to come, and to, to, to drink a, a pint with you. Uh, You're more than welcome. I, I would like, uh, I don't know, Ben, do you have something else to, to tell me, or can we have now like a, a little bit of a colloquium between you, between Deepak between Hossein and have a little bit of a friendly chat. Is there anything else that you would like to show me or to? Uh, I was just going to finish off with explaining about the ahead. industries we supply into. So we also supply tools for directly machining contact lenses, contract lenses, contract lenses. This is a very nice industry to supply into because you feel like you're gaining something back from the tool by helping people improve their vision or especially in the interocular lens industry, you're at times giving people their vision back, which improves their quality of life. We also supply tools into the mold pin industry. This is where materials such as tungsten carbide um, and aluminium and copper are machined in order to produce mold pins, which then are used to manufacture mobile phone, men, mobile phone camera lenses, for example. 
All right. And these are your core competences. Uh, if you could summarize a little bit uh, to be very clear. So uh, what is the, the, the main differentiator between the activities in the US, which we heard very much in detail from Deepak, and the activities in Stevenage UK? So as a diamond tool manufacturer, We've worked on offering our customers consistent tool performance. So ensuring whether the tool's a new tool or a repaired tool, they don't just receive a high quality tool, but a tool that will perform consistently every time it's returned to them. Um, we're very accountable for our lead times. We guarantee a four to five week delivery of new tools. And if we're late on an order, we'll punish ourselves by repairing that tool once free of charge for the customer. We offer a high quality relap ensuring minimal diamond removal. The new tool is fairly expensive. A repair is fairly cheap. By repairing the tool as many times as possible, it helps our customers save money. We also have a huge advantage over our competitors that we speak diamond turning. Because of our sister companies being Microam and 603 Optics, we don't just manufacture diamond tools, we also use them in-house, which gives us direct diamond turning technician feedback which helps us improve our processes. We have six PhDs within the group who are putting science to work and constantly ensuring that we're using technology and metrology that will keep us one step ahead of the market. And we also have a customer ecosystem access where we have decades of experience in tool manufacturing, diamond turning and metrology. You know what, uh, you have really great technology and I'm listening to it and I, I think uh, this information we can give uh, offline to the members, but I'm very interested now in finding new cooperations. As interested as I am as following a ping pong match that I, I, I was very interested in following, but I have Deepak, Deepak and I have and Ben, I have the, the main the people, people from, from the US and from the UK respectively. And I want to introduce you to a few friends. I want to see there is some cooperation here. I'm going to bring you in touch. This is the magic of, the, of these times in which you can bring a person from Neuchâtel, Switzerland to Massachusetts looking for some cooperation. The company SUS Microoptics is the success story of the new microoptics revolution in Europe. So this company made me very excited because they have done things like from the light carpet as helping companies in the telecom, telecom sector. Uh, Mark, thank you very much for being here. We just heard about this diamond turning technology. Is there anything that resonated with you for a potential cooperation? Yes, yes. I mean, we talked a lot. I mean, I hear very nice things about the roughness, these kind of things. It's picometer. I think this is really great. But I have one question about that. Uh, you know, Sus micro optics is the word micro. Um, uh, you, you talked about uh, big mirrors of two meters, but how, how about on the opposite side? What, what are the smallest features? Uh, you can do and uh, is it uh, can it be um, kind of free forms or, or, or has it to be like spherical forms that's maybe my questions so um, so here uh, we are in the applications lab so thanks a lot for your question um, the answer to that is as you know the optics is going the other direction it's going to smaller and smaller and smaller so um, one of the things that you can see behind this is all the metrology and with the diamond turning of invested is to actually get smaller. So uh, we have done micro optics in the one to two millimeter range as well. Uh, we also have customers who are doing sub one millimeter uh, micro optics as well. So the key about that is especially going into harder materials where conventionally you will have to grind, but it's so hard to get your grinding wheel inside a feature like that. Now we are able to put a dead sharp tool in. So you're able to really push that boundary between um, the concaves and the convexes of those micro optics. Mm, that's great. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's me, uh, yeah. sorry. No, Mark, please go ahead. Ah, okay, because uh, at, at SUS Microoptics, we are usually uh, we're doing a lot of replication. I mean, so we have masters and then submasters and then uh, to, uh, to end up to, to, uh, to the final optic. And um, for us, something which is very, very important, it's, it's the whole uh, submaster flatness. And we, uh, we are working a lot with glass or silicon, um, but uh, we also more, more have a nickel, hard nickel, um, phosphor nickels. 
And uh, but I hear that the tungsten uh, carbide could also be a, a, a solution of. Uh, um, is, is that possible if you think about eight or 12 inch wafers to to engrave that in these kind of materials or and uh, to to keep the flatness after for the all the, the rest of the processes so i think you're you're thinking about a large wafer with multiple cavities in it yeah. right yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so it's definitely you know it's definitely something that our customers are already doing it is possible the repeatability of the tool actually lets you, you know, if you had to make tool swaps within within that, it's also possible. Um, the tungsten carbide allows you to now mold harder materials, but keep in mind that we also have um, proprietary tooling that would enable diamond turning of steel. So if you didn't if you didn't have to plate it with electrolysis nickel, um, if you just wanted to directly diamond turn steel, um, you know, M10 we could we could provide a proprietary tool that, that allows that to happen. And this by without the uh, polishing step after, you don't need that. You, you are you're flat enough for a... Uh... It depends on what you require. Most of our customers, even on tungsten carbide, are getting sub three nanometer finish. Mm -hmm. um, and definitely the forms are well within 50 nanometers peak to valley. So sometimes they do a little bit of a hand polish just for aesthetics purpose, but uh, most of them are not actually. Okay. Okay. And that sounds great. Hey, hey, Mark, thank you so much for joining today. It was it was really great to have you. Deepak, this meeting is not only in the room here. We are also live streaming it in YouTube. And in YouTube, there is a question from a LiDAR company that is uh, referenced worldwide, Leather Tech. Leather Tech, uh, Pierre de Solniers, is asking you, uh, when you made the comment about the uh, picometer roughness, he's wondering, uh, could you give some more details about this? And what about the mid-spatial frequency errors and noise? I, they, they do need this kind of resolution. This is a key customer for you. Deepak, you are muted, you are and, muted. I, have and I have a map to celebrate, celebrate right, accomplishment. Such accomplishment. OK, so um, I think the key, the key thing is, let me clarify. So the picometer resolution is on the diamond turning machines, which are existing. So that's not the roughness we are going to get. You're still going to get in the nanometer level roughness, roughness that you have. Um, the, question, the question that you have was, you know, what kind of mid-spatials? And that's, that's really important. So mid-spatials are a function of two things. One is how many corrections that you have to put in because your tool is wearing really quickly. And the other thing is how good is your tool waviness itself? So if you, if you had a good tool, but you had a whole bunch of waviness in it, you're still going to get a lot of mid spatials in it. What with between micro lamb, the, the laser side of things and between M10, the tool side of things, we make sure that we provide you the, the right technology as well as a perfect tool waviness with minimal mid spatials so that that doesn't replicate onto the part. Uh, I yeah, want to make an introduction to them because I think this is an obvious, an obvious cooperation. Uh, Leather Tech is a success story on the LiDAR business. Look, we have, we have five minutes to go. And for me, this is the most exciting part of the meeting. Deepak, you are the CEO of this company. So I have to ask you, dream away. If I come to visit you in five years, what kind of things are you going to tell me differently? What kind of things are your preferred future for MicroLAM? So I think what we're doing is we are, we are constantly breaking boundaries, right? And part of it is because we just don't care too much about status quo stuff. If you look two years or three years ago, they would say, well, you wouldn't put a tool on a tungsten carbide mold or you wouldn't put a tool on a glass optic. And those are the barriers that we are looking to break because we want to empower our customers with the right technology so that they can get that done. See, optical engineers are always crazy and they have very futuristic designs, but then the issue comes with how are you going to manufacture them? And what we are doing is we are, we are in the process of building an, an optical manufacturing empire um, that will empower our customers. So the future, if you came back in a bit, you know, what we think is it's going to be glass optics, um, whether we're using our system and M10 tool 
and our facility in, um, in Keen, or we're empowering customers to machine complex glass optics or micro optics, and even incorporating free forms in that, because then that lets a whole lot of things and everything we deal with today, from a cell phone to automotive to virtual reality, everything is optics. And I think the more, uh, more we have that we improve those optics and manufacturability of those optics, the, the more efficient our life is going to be. And um, I think, I think that's, where, that's where we are heading towards as well. You know what I think, Deepak? I think that this market, the market of optics, is, uh, it had a time in which it was very defragmented. Now it consolidated a bit. And now we are the, in, the, in the fragmentation process. And we are seeing that there are new application fields that are being enabled by optics. And there are many, many new startups appearing on the quantum side, on the LiDAR side. We see this as a growth market. And most of these companies, when they start developing the first prototypes, they develop them with the worst partners because they get them a very low cost prototype, affordable prototype with no roadmap to production. In my mind, Honestly, this is this is your play field. This is the, the value that you provide because you can help customers having a process that is suitable to production. Absolutely. And we are here to we are here to support the customers. As you can tell, we have an applications lab with um, diamond turning machines. Our R and D lab has about two diamond turning machines, and we have all the metrology to answer your questions. We have the Lufos HD here, we have a PGI optics. We have a white light interferometer, and we also have a Zygo Fuso interferometer here. So the whole idea is when a customer comes with us with a problem, we want to give them a full solution with supporting metrology so they, they are com completely convinced, but most importantly, they are able to incorporate our solution into their manufacturing process as soon as possible. Let me ask something to SUS Microoptics now. Uh, one of the values of SUS Microoptics, what is automotive qualified? You, out, you qualify the full process because you have customers in automotive. Uh, uh, Deepak from Microlam, uh, do you, uh, when you target automotive application, is it a challenge to, to, to work with customers that are automotive qualified or that are not automotive qualified and need to be? How do you address this? And I will go to Mark after. Yeah, so, so typically not the tier we are in. So they're both about challenging. When I say the new markets we are in, one is automotive and the other one is medical. So they both can be very challenging to work with. However, our process here is we are not really changing the functionality of the product, but we are making it a lot more efficient. And because we are a couple of tiers down in terms of the optics we're supplying, um, that really doesn't pose too much of a challenge, whether in automotive, as well as in the medical field. Uh, Mark, you have worked really hard uh, on making the micro-optics automotive qualified. Uh, how does it work? Uh, il illuminate me and the audience. How does it work when you mm -hmm. get new equipment uh, to fit the automotive qualification process of SUS Microoptics? It's more the processes I think we need to adjust. I mean, the, the equipment we, we we have, some need to be adjusted to, uh, I mean, it's also a question of production of yield. And uh, so it's um, it's kind of a high-end optics you need to, to make in, uh, in a way that it's uh, it's it's uh, it's in the specification asked by the customer. He has very clear and very tough specification you need to fulfill. And then of course you need to, to think after um, it's not r and I mean, it's the, the step after you have really production. I mean, and production, it's not a hundred pieces. It's uh, it's million of pieces and they, they need to fit exactly on the, on the specification of the, of the, uh, of the customers. And here, what is important for Swiss micro optics is also when you begin the whole process to have stable, what I called before masters and something. That's why I was quite interested about that uh, tungsten carbide or maybe other, other materials and also the roughness the precision you can do that because if uh, if if we need to redo or if there is a small uncertainty or something which is not really nicely made then of course this can um, injure or not injure but um, uh, destroy the yield and this kind of things and uh, that's why we are looking also in this mastering how to do the mastering how to say very reliable of course mm -hmm. Deepak it was yes. for me for me uh, uh, an honest an pleasure, honest pleasure to be with you for one hour. I enjoyed every single minute of it. I would like to ask everyone in the room to switch on their camera 
unmute the microphone don't worry about the echo and let's give each other, each other a, big a big applause, applause for, what for what happened to, happened to, it. to it let's do let's... that all right <laughs> And for those of you who are in England, the beautiful country in the European continent, I would like to say, let's beat the Germans. And for those of you who are in Germany, let's beat the English, because I had to be neutral. Until the next time, take care of each other. Wash your hands, wear a mask, or get vaccinated with Pfizer, AstraZeneca, Moderna, or any of the neighbors. It was truly, truly fantastic to be, you, to be with you today. And I want to go as soon as possible to come and visit your company. I want to start traveling again very soon. Sure, everyone's welcome here. Yeah. part of today's meeting. If you are in our Zoom room, our informal private discussion is about to start. I call it virtual drinks with friends. And we all know follow-up is important. But for now, if you are watching on YouTube, that's where we leave you for today. Okay, okay. Thanks to the Epic Production crew and all the sponsors for making today's event possible. More details about upcoming meetings are on our website. And if you want to get in touch with any of the participants, all you have to do is contact me directly and I will make sure you get introduced. It is all about connections. Thanks for being Epic.